What is up, guys? Welcome back to the iOS dev channel, maxcodes.io. In this video, you're going to be learning about pickers in Swift UI and a little bit more about state and really kind of how pickers work in Swift UI, which will give you not only an understanding of pickers, but kind of how to manipulate the user interface in Swift UI because it's actually very, very different than you've kind of seen before. And I came to this understanding as I was learning about pickers, and I think that you're going to gain a lot of value at this video. So, even though you see what we see here on the screen, we're actually gonna be jumping around from traditional looking picker views to this point, which is really interesting because the code is actually more complex at the end of this video, but it's still only like 10 lines. So let me kind of show you how that works. It's really strange, but uh, let's get right into it. So I've created a new Xcode project. As you can see, it's just an empty app. I call it Pickers and Swift UI. Feel free to go ahead and create this application or a blank application and we're ready to start, okay? So the first thing I wanna do is I just want to put in a picker, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say picker and you'll see if you do the initialization that we have this really kind of weird looking initialization. Go ahead and hit return there and the binding is kind of what's gonna keep track of our index. So what we're gonna do is say dollar sign and we'll say country index because you can see we're dealing with countries here. So country index, now we have to declare this. So let's say at state, and we'll call it private because it's a state variable, which someone in the comments let me know about. So thanks for that pointer. And uh, yeah, we'll call that private var, and we'll say, we'll say country index, okay, is equal to zero. So by default, we're just gonna select the first one on the list, whatever country that might be. Okay, so we can go ahead now and we can hit tab on the label, Pretty simple stuff, just put in some text here. Don't get caught up there and just put in a string. I've done that before and then it doesn't tell you, so it can be really confusing. Just make sure you put in the text. Okay, and I'm gonna call it country. And then for the content, I'm gonna hit return and I'm just gonna put in some text. So I'll say item one and I'll say text item two and I'll say text item three, all right? Now I'll expand this a bit so we can see this all on some separate lines here. So pretty basic stuff. We just have a picker in here and uh, a state variable. Let's see what this gives us. Okay, so you'll see here we have these three items, right? Very basic, doesn't even look like a picker, right? And that's because we need to wrap it around with a section and that's how we can get that traditional picker view look. So that UI picker view look from UI kit. So go ahead and cut out the picker and closure and we will wrap it with a section. Now this section, if we paste this back in here, is gonna give us a traditional UI picker view look with the scrolling and like the barrel look, okay? Okay, so, well, first what we have to do, oops, looks like it crashed, not sure why that happened. Okay, either way, what we wanna do now is before we get that traditional UI picker view look, we want to kind of iterate over some, some traditional kind of data, right? We wanna iterate over some data and display that in there customly, okay? So before we get into that traditional kind of UI picker view look, let's go ahead and do that, okay? All right, so we get a crasher. Either way, it doesn't matter. We're gonna move on. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to cut out all these items and let's go up here and say var and we'll say countries is equal to an array, and I'll just say US, I'll say Germany, I'll say Russia, Canada, I guess, Mexico, and Romania. And how about North Korea? <laughs> All right, whatever. So let's go ahead and iterate over these with four each. Okay, so pretty basic kind of for loop here. We'll say four each, and we'll throw in the zero and we'll say less than countries.count. Pretty basic programming, you've already done this before. And we'll say text. And this is where it gets kind of weird. We'll say self.countries. And then we'll say at the dollar sign zero. Now, if you've never done any Swift UI or any traditional programming, you probably don't know what this is. But if you've done any traditional Swift, you've probably come across the dollar sign zero before but that's what we're gonna have to do. Now the tag is what is kind of weird. It's kind of like the key property in um, React. 
Now, another way of getting around this tag thing is to use identifiable, okay? And uh, now you'll see that once we compile this, we get that traditional UI picker view. Okay, so that's kind of what I wanted to show you. And the reason it doesn't crash now is because we're tagging these. So let me kind of copy that. Well, let's just comment it out. And let me explain how this works because that was probably very confusing for a second. Let's go ahead and say text and we'll just say item one, right? And we'll say text item two. And you'll see that when we compile it, it actually crashes it, right? All right, so it's because we're using this for loop, right? So let's go ahead and comment that out. You'll see it crashes it, right? Because the tag is not there, right? So it crashes it. Okay, very similar to what happens if you are using, um, if you're using keys in React, although it doesn't crash it in React, right? So let's say dot tag, we'll say zero, dot tag, and we'll say one. Now I expect this not to crash it, but this is actually just a total guess. But let's go ahead and do it and it didn't crash it. Okay, I'm actually very, very happy it didn't because that was a guess, right? I just assumed that uh, that tag was preventing it from crashing because in a language like, or a framework, a library rather, like React, if you don't mark your divs with keys that are being iterated over, then you're not gonna get a crash, but it's going to give you an error in the console, okay? Or a warning. So what we wanna do is we actually want to get rid of this, obviously. So let's command Z all that. Hopefully that makes sense. Like it probably doesn't make sense why you have to tag it, but what does make sense is that you have to tag it for it to not crash. So at least you understand why it crashed before to a degree, right? Okay, so let's remove it back to that. And we now have like a traditional kind of picker view, right? So let's go ahead and just finish off the video by kind of uh, wrapping it in a form so that we can get that click look, right? So let's take this section entirely and let's just say form. Now, this isn't gonna work if you're running Xcode beta one, okay? So forms are only available in Xcode beta two. Okay, and you'll see we have this kind of form now, all right? So let me recompile that. And once we see that this doesn't really work, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna wrap it around with a navigation view, okay? So let's go ahead and take the entire form and let's say navigation view wrap that around and on the view, we just want to add the navigation bar title, right? And we'll just say text and we'll say country. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. One thing that's kind of weird is that you have to put the navigation bar title on the inner element, right? So it's not actually on the navigation view, it's on the form, but that's what makes it work. Okay, so that's kind of how pickers in Swift UI work. Hopefully that gives you an understanding of UI picker views and even forms in Swift UI. Now, what I kind of want to do is I want to expand on this video. I'll do it from scratch, but what I'm going to do is make another video, maybe today or tomorrow, showing you how to select a country and then have it display the coordinates with MapKit right here. So I think that'll be a really interesting video and I think it will help you all out a little bit more and help you understand UI view representable and concepts like that and merging them with Swift UI and UI view controller. So yeah, if you want to see that, just wait till the end of this video, there should be a link attached like on the screen. And uh, if you like the video, please leave a like, subscribe and check out my website, maxcodes.io. I have a free newsletter that you can sign up for where I'll send out the Slack link where you can join the community of devs. And that community is also linked in the description, the Slack channel. So I highly recommend joining that. Not trying to plug any content right here for you. No course content that I'm plugging. Just uh, trying to gather the community in Slack and the newsletter. So yeah, hope you enjoy the video and uh, I'll see you in the very next video I upload. Catch you next time.